Satire has been a wonderful literary device and the favorite of many classic writers. Why do you use it in movies then? Well, movies have been a prominent medium in propagating ideas and concepts. However, to make the film appeal to the masses and express itself in a coherent manner, directors resort to various methods of filmmaking. Satire is such a method. Satire represents global issues, human nature, tragedy and motives in a comedic fashion. They mock the system, toy with the characters and express their ideas with humor. Satires use simple quirky conversations and simplify a complex notion. This helps to abstain from preaching to the audience and keep them entertained and motivated. With all that said, here is the list of top 10 satirical movies ever made in Hollywood. Moving ahead at number 1, we have Office Space, released in 1999. Throughout the countless times that I have seen Office Space, it has never failed to make me laugh and smile throughout the whole thing. I have always enjoyed films like this and the big Lebowski where smart situational humor is what carries the movie. Office Space offers much much more. Office Space is a satirical take on corporate jobs. It is filled with comedic elements and satirizes the plight of employees at the firm. Tired of the ingratitude and bland nature of the job where security is not certain, three co-workers decide to rise above the system. and embezzle money from their company they become rebellions but are not as smart as they think the situation these characters get involved in make for an entertaining watch moving ahead at number 2 we have fight club released in 1999 it is a film based on chuck palahniuk novel of the same name the film stars brad pitt and edward norton with both actors turning in powerful and career defining performances and the two form an electrifying dynamic which has helped make fight club a modern classic the film satirical components tackle the consumer culture lifestyle branding and construction of masculinity with norton's character often breaking the fourth wall and speaking directly to the audience Fight Club failed to meet the studio's expectations at the box office and initially received a polarizing reaction from critics, becoming one of the most controversial and talked about films of the year. But this remains one of my favorites. Moving ahead at number 3, we have Team America: World Police released in 2004. Much like the film Interview, 2004's Team America: World Police features a North Korean dictator as the film's central villain. Team America is a satire of American society, culture, the nature of power and the celebration of style over substance. The film also satirizes big budget action films and their associated cliches and stereotypes with particularly humorous emphasis on the global implication of United States politics. Even the film's title is de- derived from the domestic and international political criticism that the foreign policy of the United States frequently and unilaterally tries to police the world. Team America World Police is a wonderful piece of satire that may be even more relevant today than its time of release. This is quite a watch. Moving ahead at number 4 we have Thank You for Smoking released in 2005. Jason Reitens Sharp satire on the 21st century attitude towards smoking places Aaron Eckert's Nick Naylor a tobacco lobbyist in the firing line as he attempts to dispel the idea that smoking and cancer are inherently linked all the while trying to be credible role model to his young son Naylor confidently tells a young cancer patient that he would not want anyone to die of lung cancer because he wants healthy people to buy his cigarettes and continue smoking and yet nobody in the film is seen ever smoking the gang of lobbyists put forward ideas such as one with a concern that american actors are no longer seen smoking on screen to try to encourage people to buy cigarettes that when considered seem worryingly credible moving ahead at number 5 we have idiocracy released in 2006 Idiocracy tells the story of two people who take part in a top secret military human hibernation experiment 
only to awaken 500 years later in a dystopian society where anti-intellectualism and commercialism have displaced intellectual curiosity, social responsibility and coherent notions of justice and human rights. The film features a memorable performance from actor Terry Crews who plays President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew. Idiocracy never received a wide theatrical release though it's managed to find a widespread cult following in the years since it's a, it's released. Despite the film's lack of notoriety, Idiocracy is worth seeking out even if it has ended up being a surprisingly accurate portrayal of the future. Moving ahead at number 6 we have Borat released in 2006. Technically the full title of this movie is Borat Cultural Learnings of America from Make Benefit Glorious no- Nation of Kazakhstan. But that's a mouthful. So we'll trim it down for the rest of the entry by crafting a hilariously naive character that is in the joke with the audience. Borat manages to satirize the very nation he is supposed to be exploring. He exposes some of the America's dirtiest corners including racism, sexism, and a general lack of common sense. On the other hand, so many people are willing to help this foreign man learn about the great parts of America. In that sense, the movie also touches the generosity of Americans despite some of their faults. Borat is also a satire on reality TV as a genre. with Cohen refusing to take break character and often taking the jokes way too far from and with his unsuspecting co-stars moving ahead at number 7 we have Tropic Thunder released in 2008 Tropic Thunder stars Ben Stiller, Jack Black, Robert Downey Jr, Jay Baruchel and Brandon T Jackson as a group of prima donna actors who are making an expensive Vietnam war film Tuck Speedman, played by Ben Stiller, is a pampered action superstar who sets out for Southeast Asia to take part in the biggest, most expensive war movie ever produced. Soon after filming begins, he and his co-stars Oscar winner Kirk Lazarus, played by Robert Downey, comic Jeff Fortney, played by Jack Black, and the rest of the crew must become real soldiers when they are unexpectedly dropped in the Golden Triangle. home of a ruthless gang of heroin producers the triangle home of ruthless heroin producers ridiculous premise serves as a background for the satirical takedown of the film industry and more specifically the use of roles by big name actors to inspire companion simply as a medium of praise the attack crafted and hilarious tropic thunder also saw its fair share of criticism thanks to the satirical depiction of the mentally handicapped and usage of black space makeup in the film this is a must watch by everyone moving ahead at number 8 we have in the loop released in 2009 seven years before he skewered the inner workings of the white house with veep armando vanishi did the same for the hallowed halls of the british government with the equally insult tag series the thick of it in the loop is a feature length spin off of that original series in which a poorly wounded song bite from the minister for international development simon foster played by tom hollander seems to signal that the uk is intent on going to war with the middle east enter falmouth communication director malcolm tucker peter capaldi who sets off with foster for washington dc in order to do manage control but instead makes foster who can't seem to say anything right the prawn in the tug of war between america's pro and anti war factions at a time when politicians every utterance and every tweet is endlessly scrutinized in the loop is a reminder that every word counts so apt for today's time moving ahead at number 9 we have jump street released in 2014 while 21 jump street was a serviceable action comedy 22 jump street took aim at the accusation towards director hollywood and regard of its lack of originality and sequel spawning The film frequently and knowingly winks to the audience that their money has paid for them to watch a film 
where the protagonists do exactly the same as last time. The first act of the film is as close as something can get to talking directly to the audience without actually breaking the fourth wall. The ability to make constant jokes about sequels and repetition funny is one of the many qualities of 22 Jump Street. The joke is stretched even farther in a post credit sequence that imagine subsequent entries in the canon if the film series were to continue ad infinitum. Moving ahead, before going to 10, number 10, here are some honorable mentions. First, I would like to take the name of Bullworth, released in 1998. And second will be the interview released in 2014. And the third is Uncle Sam, released in 1996. Moving ahead at number 10, we have Birdman, released in 2014. How fortunate Alejandro was that Michael Keaton agreed to play the role of Regan Thompson. In doing so, Keaton managed to mirror his own career, finding great praise in the title role of a superhero film and then disappearing from the spotlight. Several decades later, both Keaton and Thompson returned for one last crack at the spotlight and in Keaton's case, he was successful. It is easy to be distracted by the virtual illusion of Emmanuel Lubinsky's seemingly continuous shot, which plays as the direct opposite of the confines of a stage. Birdman is about the addiction of show business and how it envelops those who are at the center of it, as they are unable to control everything that is going on as a great personality clash. This one is definitely a must watch for every movie lover. So that's all for 